it's like standing on the edge of an ocean and one wave will come and knock you down, pick you up and dump you down. You get back up and you stand there again and another wave comes and just jostles you and you think, okay, I'm better now. Another wave barely touches your ankles and you think, okay, I think I'm, I'm okay. Another wave then comes and knocks you down again, picks you up, dumps you down. So it's that kind of wave upon wave and some are worse and some are better and as time goes on they get fewer and farther between. There were a lot of times when I was very emotional, but they were scattered. Like I said, I could be driving down a road and boom, it would hit me. You know, the loss, the helplessness a person feels because, you know, there's nothing that we can do um, if someone chooses to do this. Like I say, there are survivors who say, the first thing I'm going to do when I see them again is to shake them and slap them and say, why did you do this to our family? So there's enormous amounts of anger. I get concerned, let's say a survivor is a year after the death, when they continue to say, oh, I could never be angry at her. At her. Well, you know what? You have to get angry with that person because they have changed your life forever. They chose to leave your world. This was not an accidental death. When this happened, it stood with me for a long time. It was very heavy on me for a long time. I couldn't change it. I had to come to grips with it. I had to come to grips with the fact that I, I, I realized that Jerry could do this, and then Jerry did do this, and I wasn't able to do anything about it, even though I was more than maybe most. Um, and that's hard. But I really do feel that, ultimately, you reach a point of acceptance, partially because you have no choice. Um, but also because, I mean, these people, people that do this, including my brother, made a choice.